It is 5.30 if we could call the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Amherst and Government Village to order, please, by standing and pledging the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Present. Mr. Zappel? Here. Mrs. Gillis? Here. Dr. Massa? Present. Mrs. Bach? Here. Item 4 of the agenda this evening would be to adopt the agenda as, it's pre as it is presented, and I know there were some updates to it this afternoon, I believe. We have a motion? So, I'm sorry. And a second? Second. second. Good motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments on the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, please call the roll. Uh, Ms. Ms. Gillis, aye. Dr. Messer, aye. Mrs. Wackels, aye. Mr. Zappel, aye. Mr. Angle, aye. Item five will be hearing of the public, and there is no one signed up to speak addressed to us this evening, so we would move on to item six, which would be the treasurer's report. Second. 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 Um, I would like to welcome like to um, Sarah Terry Joe. Uh, um, she is she, uh, the newest, newest comment. There's actually a few of you know, not there tonight, but I'll say she's the newest for right now. We are so excited to welcome Sarah into the treasurer's office. Um, she will be doing the payroll and benefits um, administrative assistant. You'll see um, the um, job description a little bit later in the agenda, but, which is a hybrid of our current payroll and our benefits directors. Um, and then I just wanted to say that she comes to us with um, her bachelor's education. She comes with seven years experience in the office. You currently work for Gnomes, right? Yes. And um, she's a highly productive individual. I think she has tremendous capability to learn a very tough role of, of payroll in this district. So, Sarah, welcome. Thank you. Please. Would you like to say anything? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can introduce her too. <laughs> this is my daughter Parker. <laughs> She'll be around probably. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity. I'm really excited to be a part of the team. You're welcome. Thank Glad you. Glad to have you. <laughs> All right, next thing, um, just um, in a gender review with Mr. Engel and Mr. Molnar um, Friday morning. We talked about um, ramping up the efforts of the Finance and Audit Committee. In, in the past, and my tenure here, and I'm sure before that, Finance Audit Committee met twice a year, which is basically what is required to go over the forecast, to go over the prior year's fiscal audit. But I really feel like this needs to be ramped up a bit in order to increase the knowledge and participation. Um, not just of the committee, but this finance and audit committee, which is currently made up of Mr. Engel and Mr. Zappa, um, and it potentially includes a community member, but in the future, some of the financial information could be, and perhaps should be, disseminated by the board members on the finance and audit committee. Um, I feel like, I, I love to teach, I'm not a teacher, by my education or experience, but I would really like to teach the board members more about school finance so that you're more well-versed in the topics of school finance. So I would anticipate that we'll meet the next time again in, in May, if not sooner. Um, May is typically the forecast update um, that's required by statute. Um, but we also have the fiscal audit that we will need to review. Um, so we can hop over to the next, that's the segue. Um, financial audit for last year, fiscal 22, the audit exit conference is tomorrow morning, and several of the board members will be meeting. And just so that the audience realizes that three board members can be in one place for the exit conference simply because it's not a meeting of the board, it's a meeting of the auditor of the state of Ohio. Um, just know that upon completion of the audit, it's not really finalized yet. It's not finalized until it is released by the auditor of state favor, and it should be released within two to three weeks. So far, 
everything has been very positive. It's been very easy to work with other state governments this year. Um, definitely more of a well oiled machine than it has been in the past year. So um, I look forward to great things from the, the fiscal audit from last year. Next. So this is the report that you see frequently. Um, it is the financial recap, both from a month to date standpoint. So February of 23 compared to 22 and 21. And then from a fiscal year to date, which is recalled 7 1 to the end of February. So our year to date numbers are on the right hand side of the spreadsheet. They are organized and um, subtotaled by five year forecast lines, which is the same way you all see the five year forecast in October and May. Um, the green highlights are typically, are, are definitely where we have favorable variances over the prior year. Um, just recall that um, favorable variances for revenue is more revenue than we received last year. And a favorable variance for expenditure is we spent less in this fiscal year than we did in the prior fiscal year. You'll see some notations on the bottom, um, line 101, which is real estate revenue. Um, just wanted to point out that we received two advances. Uh, we only received the second advance in February of this year. Um, sorry, I'm confusing myself. We received two advances in February 22. We received only the first half of 2022 this February. We received another advance in March that you don't see up here, and then settlement action is tomorrow. So I should know more about um, the year-to-date real estate revenues as of tomorrow. Um, if you all have any questions, um, I'll just say the biggest variance in the report is in the other revenue line, line 106. Um, we received 208000 this year and 150000 last year. We did receive the old copy release bio um, in February. That's what... Um, <laughs> Through that up into a variant status. Other than that, um, if you look at the lower right, we're running at a deficit right now of $839,000. That could be rectified uh, tomorrow with the real estate settlement. I'm expecting public utility property um, delinquencies to be paid to us. Any questions? We'll move on to the recommendations then. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I, it, oh, I did. I don't know why I didn't. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Well, we really don't need that slide, so let's let the the uh, presentation catch up to us. Uh, what you'll see. You always see from me for the prior month financials is a two part financial reconciliation. You'll see a financial summary by Fund and Special Cost Center. You see the forecast report for General Fund, there's your one and the emergency levy fund, 016. And then you'll see the monthly checklist. In addition to those um, financials, which is the second item, we have the approval of the regular meeting minutes of February and the special meeting minutes from March 7th. That was the visit over to the Health Flex. Um, there are appropriations changes, um, just two funds, Powers Principles Fund and uh, the Auxiliary Fund for this year. Auxiliary is the state fund that flowed through us to St. Joe's. And then we have um, quite a number of donations that need to be acknowledged by the board. And that's it for this one. Does anybody have any questions? Well, there are a motion for item 7A. <laughs> so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions or comments on those items? Hearing or seeing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mrs. Waffles? Aye. Dr. Messer? Aye. Mr. Zappoff? Aye. Mr. Engel? Aye. Motion passes. Moving into the superintendent's report, Mr. Mullen. Yes, so this evening I get the pleasure of my report to introduce, like Amy, two new staff members to the district. Uh, it's exciting thing for me. Uh, you know, when we look back at um, all the wonderful staff we have, board members and administrators and teachers and 
stack time is we just have a phenomenal stack and so the ability to add a few more is just so tonight we have a show to introduce and hopefully we'll get that up in a moment um, but first i'd like to introduce mackenzie hall uh, she's going to be our new uh, director of curriculum and instruction we went through a great process and had many different rounds and many different interviews people involved and so i just wanted to uh, share that you know we just highly recommend it. We, I think we talked to uh, former superintendents like Bob Scott, who uh, just has phenomenal praise for Mackenzie. Uh, one of the things that was so apparent when she met with our staff and teachers, and I mean, everyone was just felt like Mackenzie's someone that they could go to, someone I could invite to my classroom, someone I could connect with, help me out with, with projects and things. And so it was just, it was a phenomenal process, and she's just a phenomenal person. Um, Bob Scott, the superintendent, uh, said it would be a much difficult, much more difficult conversation to have. Uh, he retired, so <laughs> he, he said it's not so difficult. But um, if he was still, if he was still here, he would be, be fighting for her. So um, I want to introduce Mackenzie. Mackenzie's here with her husband Mike, and also Jimmy Cole and uh, Carter. And so Mackenzie, is there anything you want to share with the board and everyone? Sure, yeah, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to join your team. Um, I am thrilled to be at your anniversary. We think about hope we've been renovating it. It's going to be done someday. Um, <laughs> it's a process, but, but it's coming along, and we're excited to be a part of the community and now a part of this solution. Thank you so much for giving me this great opportunity. Absolutely. Also, I introduce uh, Dave O'Delly, who is a graduate of Steele, is an Amherst resident, very resident, but his kids have all gone through the Amherst schools. Uh, so, uh, David Seals, like Holly and um, Trent. Um, he was a varsity basketball player, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I want to welcome them tonight. Um, David has been working in human resources for 15 years with MagSource, and it's just had a desire to uh, come into the district. And Polly is an internet specialist in North Richfield. Uh, so uh, you're familiar with the education world, and I'm sure David is well, as well with all the stories you're going to tell So, <laughs> so uh, we're proud that David is going to be our new director of human resources. And again, just a phenomenal process. Everyone was involved, and he was like, again, unanimous choice number one. Uh, Christine Riders have been so forward to working with David. And David's going to come in at the May 1st. So that'll give him a whole month to um, meet the staff, the relationships, work with everyone, and prepare for, for the summer, which be crunch time for some things in the yeah. So, uh, I just want to introduce Dave O'Delli to the team as well. Sure, yeah, just uh, appreciate the opportunity. Looking forward to end it in the ground running with it. Um, I love human resources, and that's one of the things where I met with the group. You know, I wanted to uh, yeah, come out and, and uh, be able to support the community and the staff. You know, Everyone involved, so looking forward to the opportunity and honor to you know, give it this opportunity. So, thank you. Welcome to both of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right there. Right there. Right there, Mulder. Right? I'm right? right? <laughs> busy with the presentation. Yeah. She can't hear you at the same time. I'm happy to see if I can multitask and do my presentation while I'm. That's all you have, Mr. Mulder? That's all I have for tonight. Wow. <laughs> there, I know you have a lot. I do. I have a few things. I, I have. I have a few things. Um, so I, I'm very, very excited to share two projects that we've we've had um, going on uh, throughout this year. The first one, I, I know I shared this with the board on Friday. You all have hard copies in front of you. Um, our suicide intervention and prevention guidelines. This has been a project that started at the beginning of the year with all of the um, our social workers as well as our school counselors um, coming together to review uh, guidelines and procedures being used in other districts, kind of decide what we felt could work for Amherst. And what it does is it formalizes the, 
um, what to do when. And it also provides resources for teachers as far as what to do when. You'll notice that there's a flow chart in there. Each, each building and each counselor group took a section. Um, we have a, a flow chart here for teachers that say what happens when you become um, aware of a concern outside of the school, outside of school hours. What, what protocol do you follow? Um, and so we had even one of our school counselors said, you know, I've always had a question as to when I call the parent, and now I know. You know, now there's no question. And so if a parent then asks, these are our procedures, and this is what we follow. Um, so those are the suicide intervention and prevention guidelines. And then the next one, Mr. Nick Dore has been the champion for this one, our 504 uh, procedural guidelines. And again, looking for something that can streamline our process across the district. So it's, a, it's informative for families and for parents if they come to the school with a concern. We can direct them to flowcharts and information in here as far as what to expect. Um, so they don't necessarily feel like, I made the call, what next? You know, and feel like their concerns are being put out to avoid. There's a process, and this outlines the process. So not, not only can parents follow it, but the school is following it, and it's, it's the what to expect. And so, again, in here, uh, Mr. Dorr made a beautiful flow chart, but it's very easy to follow, um, and it's got all live links to all of the different um, forms, information, procedural safeguards that we would be using to provide for families and provide for teacher teams. That's Nord's Nick Dorr, just to That's know. right, Nord's <laughs> the new Nick. <laughs> New name. <laughs> Is there a byline here for Mr. Dorr? Uh, there should be. Actually, so I can just tell you, these were also vetted by our um, Giselle Spencer, who is one of our attorneys from Ennis Britain, and she looked over this. And for this one, the 504 um, guidelines in particular, she said that it is so well written, she thinks we should take it to the, on the national conference circuit and present it. Wow. wow. Yes. 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 Because of Nick Moore. <laughs> so, Nick, along, he, he kind of, um, during our first PD day at the beginning of the year, um, had the school counselors, they'd all gone through a training with Steve Gasky from the Northeast Ohio ESC, and they took all the information he had presented and kind of decided what, how they were going to format it and what would work best, and then... Mr. Dorr finished putting it together for us. Nice job. Is there policy signings that we could have? Right? Here right? <laughs> I should have this picture on the back of this little bio. I think the, the experience has now set a precedent in the district that if someone needs me to make a flow chart on their gut. Oh, so. yeah. He's become a flow chart guy. We were actually at a um, building admin meeting the other day talking about our multi tiered systems of support <laughs> procedures in each of the buildings. And at um, Nord had a flow chart up, and we all sat back and we were like, that's a Nick Dorr flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley was like, it sure is. <laughs> So, there were those two things, and then I also wanted to give an update on um, Little Commons Preschool. As we all know, we went to go tour Mercy and had a lot of discussion afterwards um, regarding some of the finer details of whether the project might work or might not work. Um, at this point, we're tabling that to the back burner while we continue to look at other options, including a possible option to stay on site at Powers. Um, at least for next year. Um, but we've also got another couple areas uh, that we're going to revisit that we visited in the past and we want to kind of revisit again to see, knowing exactly what we need, what options might be out there. So at this point, um, Mr. Molnar has shared with Mr. Zemnick, Zemnick. Um, from the Metro Parks that they can go ahead and start advertising because they've been holding off on advertising the space until we knew what we were doing. Um, um, but we told them to go ahead and, and you know, start putting it out there so that they can get someone to, to fill the space. So that's where we are with preschool. <laughs> Questions for Sarah? Or Nick. <laughs> or Nick. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question about preschool. Uh, we have a question about that. Yes. So right now the thought is we're looking for more space for now. Not necessarily 
whole separate early childhood center right now? Right now, we know that the need is more immediate than than the time to, to put a building project together for an early childhood center. Um, but whether that looks like an addition, whether it looks like a separate facility, whether it looks like just extra space, uh, we don't know yet. So, but, but I know that's be, your dream. But I think that would be something that would be with the planning group. Yes. Mm -hmm. The community planning group, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that would be something that would be on their radar from that perspective, which I think we already know that. Okay. But right now, I think Sarah's just trying to get ready for next year. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So you still can build, but you got to, I mean, it's a longer process. Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. We got to do something in the interim while we're yeah. waiting for that. Or other questions for Sarah? I have one thing, and I feel really bad. Could your presentation be helpful? Are two just like super quick errors? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I would have done it too soon if I didn't finish. Um, reading in time, just like that was just somebody to enter and go there, and then they didn't put their time. Okay, sorry, thank sorry, you. it is really beautiful. That looks like it's how it's printed. I didn't want to like edit it, but also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just a print. On next document, of course not. No, <laughs> it's, it's just how this one came out of the He's right now. Yeah, that's the like Patty Mark. No, this is, I took a screenshot to show what the. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't want to edit my own paper. Well, I appreciate you bringing that up. Like Any that. other corrections for Sarah? Are you seeing that? <laughs> if not, we would move on. Uh, JBS report. Um, the JBS report met last Thursday, so we're ahead of the game uh, with this report. Uh, we um, are moving along. We are in the process of hiring. Uh, a company to uh, make some more recommendations to the exterior of the building, which has to be addressed because it's leaking, because it's so old. So we are in the process of doing some, getting some cost factors to that, because we know that uh, just like we experienced here, the cost that we had pre-COVID has escalated a lot. So we're, hopefully we will have some reports back uh, at the next board meeting in April, that you know, so we can make some movement on what we're going to be able to accomplish this summer. We also the other big talk was putting in a new program for truck driving for LCD truck drivers. Uh, so we were concerned about where that training would occur because of the parking lot. But however, when they came on site and looked at that. They are thrilled with the one parking lot that's a mess that we thought would have to be redone. They don't want it to be done. They said, we prefer it to be like this because they said, we're going to tear it up more. So leave it alone. We would prefer it to be a mess because that's reality, you know, when they're doing things. So we're working diligently um, on trying to get that program in place as well. Okay. Um, it will probably start as an adult ed program initially just because there's a lot of adult ed program people would ask about that before we become high school program. So, uh, questions? Okay. We will be meeting there in April on the 24th um, at 5.30. The actual board meeting will be a little bit later than 5.30 because uh, when I attended the two when I attended the meeting this week with Keystone there, they did not tour until after the board meeting, which I thought was not a good suggestion because that way the student and everyone that was there from Amherst had to sit through the, through the board meeting. Uh, and they had quite a couple lengthy presentations. So we will be touring at 5.30 and then the board meeting and dinner <coughs> will follow. Okay. Figures. You add that to it, right? <laughs> so, um, and everyone, of course, be notified of that. Anyone is welcome to come. I don't know exactly what student will be giving the tour. It will be an Amherst student. Um, so, and if you, the question that will need to be answered for probably like you might let me know will be if you want a tour of the entire building or if you just want a tour of the. 
program that the students in. Personally, I think I would prefer you to do the entire tour, even though it will take a little bit longer. That way, everybody will know when we come back and start asking for dollars. You know, you become the, for this community, you become the spokesperson that, yes, that levy or that money will be needed, okay? So that's the only update that I have on that for you. <clears throat> Any other committee reports? Any legislative report this evening? Yes. <laughs> So the evening, thank you so much. Um, so last month was pretty a great one because it was pretty much about uh, Senate Bill 1, which just passed the past couple of weeks. So um, in response to that, yes, there, I know, uh, the State Board of Education, I won't go through all that, but basically they had a proposed resolution regarding the board's commitment to preserve transparency and public participation. In Ohio for visual education. Next slide, please. Okay, so we will go through some House committee activities and then Senate committee activities. So um, the first one is the biannual budget, House Bill 23, and they will hold uh, this week, actually, tomorrow, Thursday, a uh, public testimony on that. And then one of the biggies that uh, Trying to decipher this as well as uh, House Bill House Bill One, which seeks to modify uh, the law regarding property taxation and income tax rates. So, um, according to financial uh, fiscal analysis by the legislative, legislative committee, um, they see that income tax is estimated to reduce uh, the income tax cut. Is estimated to reduce the general revenue fund tax revenues by two billion dollars. Um, it would also eliminate two percent rollback on residential and agricultural property, which in turn will cause local taxpayers to uh, make up the revenue, or most schools and local governments will not uh, receive that money. And then uh, House Bill 920, which has been in existence for years. Kind of plays into this as well, whether it applies or not. Um, if it does not apply, then um, schools will experience reduction in tax revenue uh, from inside millage and voted upon fixed rate levies. And if it does apply, then residential and agricultural property taxpayers will have their taxes automatically raised to offset the reduction in valuation created by the Increase in the assessment percentage from I believe it's what, 35 percent to 31 percent. 31 to 35. Yes, which is the 10 percent. So, um, subtract the 10 percent. So, either way, school districts and their local governments would experience a loss in revenue from the village. Um, next slide, please. That's approximately $360,000 revenue loss. Uh, House Bill 6, I'm just going through a few of these. It seeks to enact the State Women's Sports Act, so they will require schools, state institutions of higher education, and private colleges to, de to designate separate single sex teams and sports for each sex. House Bill 8 seeks to enact the Parents' Bill of Rights to require public schools to adopt a policy on parental notification of student health and well being. Um, and instructional materials with explicit content, by the way. Uh, House Bill 11 um, is another uh, one that's going to come up again and again. Uh, it seeks to establish the back tax scholarship program to begin operating for next school year and repeal the education before scholarship pilot program. Um, oh, can you go back? Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> So uh, this allowed the backpack scholarship program uh, permits eligible students to enroll in any educational enrollment uh, environment that their parents deem um, is the best fit for them, whether it be a traditional school homeschooling or um, some of these community and non-charter non-public schools. It requires the Church of State to establish an educational savings account for these students to purchase educational goods and services, and 
and um, just the main thing is where students go, state funding goes. So that's a concern for the um, performance of public education. And House Bill 12 is a contained bill to the Senate Bill 1 that just passed in the Senate. So again, um, renaming the Department of Education and um, creating a new position of Director of Education. And it also informs the functions and responsibilities of the Board of Education and the Superintendent of Public Instruction. Next slide, please. So, some Senate Committee activity. Uh, Senate Bill 6 prohibits the state teacher's retirement system and serves the school employment retirement system, uh, among other systems, um, from making investment decisions for the primary purpose of influencing environmental, social, and corporate governance policies. Senate Bill 11 expands um, eligibility for actual scholarships, again, um, allowing students to go to other types of school, and will raise uh, the tax credit from, for homeschool. Um, it's from 250 to 2000, so almost a tenfold increase. Senate Bill 14, um, which to allow school districts to employ veterans who met uh, teaching requirements but do not have uh, licenses. And we go to the next slide. Um, another uh, interesting one is Senate Bill 49. So they would connect what they call the Religious Expression Day. So it would require school boards to adopt a policy providing students um, with religious accommodations for up to three days. Um, excuse absences, and they look to um, add certain religious holidays to the non non exhaustive list of major religious um, holidays on the calendar. Okay, yes, and then two bills that recently passed out of the Senate would be Senate Bill 17. They would require it requires the state board to update the standards and model curriculum for financial literacy and entrepreneurship in grades 9 to 12. And Senate Bill 30 allows um, person 14 and 15 to now be employed between the time of 7 to 9 p.m. during the school year with parental consent. Can you next slide, please? Oh, thank you. So, um, some new bills. Out of the House, we have House Bill 103, which establishes the Ohio Social Studies Standards Task Force to develop new social studies academic standards um, for the use of next, well, 2024 2025 school year. House Bill 103 eliminates retention under the third grade reading guarantee. Um, it expands the grades from which intensive reading education is provided. Senate Bill 79 seeks to make changes to dropout prevention and recovery of community schools. And Senate Bill 66 requires public and private schools to transmit um, or transfer students' records within five school days. And last slide, Jay. Um, so, upcoming events and training. So, tomorrow we'll fill out, but it is the state legislative conference going on at campus. Uh, the Special Education Law Workshop, March 24th, with virtual or in person. Um, this month for like lawyers and to get their credits. And the uh, OSBA Forum, March 27th. Uh, it's a free one hour forum webinar where you can hear from um, OSBA's legal and legislative experts on public education topics. And last but not least, in this first quarter of the calendar year, the Northeast Regional Spring Conference will be offered on two days since we have so many people in our conference. So Monday the 27th, I'll be going then, it's in the morning, and then March 28th, it's in Smithfield. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a lot. Yes, it was. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's a lot of interesting things going down in Columbus. So, thought everybody needs to know some stuff, and we know who our local legislators are. So, if you feel a certain way about something, please contact them. Question. Governor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
there is a lot going on, and it really can have a lot of impact, especially from the money standpoint. Yes. So um, let's hope that it, some of these things don't get passed as they are presented, because it will present a whole different picture to every school district in the state. And uh, how we do things will be completely revamped. So it would be of us all to make our thoughts known to our legislative people. But I think that Dr. Mansfield indicated that most of our legislative people are not in favor of this. So, um, but just hearing that from us, because they we work very well with them and have been very involved with them, it would be great for all of us to send them an email and let them know that. And if you're wondering what to write necessarily when you're advocating for public education, Ohio School Boards Association uh, website has material um, they can help you write a letter. This is your proponent for education, for public education in Ohio. They have pointers on what, what you should say. We've done letters as a group. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very important. Advocacy is for all of us. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Facility something in the community before? Yep. Indeed. I got an easy one from the <laughs> Yeah, it's easy. So the facilities uh, committee has been getting together, and we're really excited to say that we're going to Avon Lake Transportation Center this Saturday uh, to take a tour. And we're also going to go to the Avon Performing Arts Center. And um, Mark and I are on that committee. And um, so Mike do a little research, and we have to be the attorney. And we would like to extend the invitation to the other board members to go with us this Saturday. Um, I would really highly recommend it. I know I've been to the transportation facility, and it is it's something out of the world. I've never been to Avon's Performing Arts, so it's going to be something new for me. But if the other three of you would like to attend, uh, we'll, we'll be meeting there from 9. At 9 o'clock in Avon Lake first, and then we'll be traveling over to Avon at 10 15 to do the tour over there. And we'd like to have the other three to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had an easy one. <laughs> I let Amanda handle all those things. <laughs> I don't believe there's any other reports. Okay. Then we would move on to uh, item 10, which would be personnel recommendations. So we have a few personnel recommendations this evening. I'd like to recommend the board personnel items 10A through K, which includes uh, our items for Nancy, David, and Sarah. So again, welcome. And I'd like to recommend the board approve um, personnel items 10A through K. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there a discussion or comments on any of those items? Just welcome. None? Please call the roll. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mrs. Waffle? Aye. Dr. Messer? Aye. Mr. Zappa? Aye. Mr. Engel? Aye. I am 11 this evening on the agenda of the educational recommendations. Well, we just have a couple of education recommendations. Mostly uh, the items have to do with uh, some uh, student services uh, for students that have at alternate facilities. Um, and also, item E is the updated school calendar for the next school year, which includes conference dates and times, open houses, orientations. Also, is Harrigan still here? I'm sure. uh, we got an email an hour before the meeting. We had one slight mistake on there. I think we had um, fourth and fifth grade times flip flop. I think it's fifth grade's turn to go first this next year to open house. So, so I was able to um, update that, save the PDF, put it in the drive before the meeting. So what's in the drive is the updated calendar. So that's what we'll be able to see. Mike, what date did we get? I don't think you know that. Our... Surprise. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till after tomorrow we put it on the website. <laughs> the good August 21st. Uh, Jan, is the one attached? That one is incorrect. The fourth grade and fifth grade are the only two things that need to be flipped. So fifth grade is at four o'clock. 
the date? The 25th. June 1st? August. Yep. Like, what? August 21st. That's for open house. Yeah, fifth grade is four o'clock. Fourth grade is five thirty. So that's the update for item B in the count. So with that, I'd like to recommend education items eleven A through eleven B for your approval. So moved. Second. Give a motion and a second. Is there discussion or comment? None. Mrs. Gillis? Aye. Mr. Zappel? Aye. Dr. Messer? Aye. Mrs. Wackels? Aye. Mr. Engel? Aye. To my knowledge, there's no need to move to the committee of the session this evening. Therefore, we entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any questions? We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion on that matter? Yes. I'd just like to thank the students who are filming. Thanks so much for coming to the meeting. I know it's after school and it's very appreciative that you guys come and do this. So thank you. And I know the community loves it too, so very nice. So it's not it's not on the I know. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I do. It's the junior high group. Yes. I knew that. <laughs> Call the roll. <laughs> Mrs. Gallagher. Hi, Mr. Zappa. Uh, Dr. Messer. Hi. Mrs. Wackel. Mr. Angle. Hi. 